Let's go to the book of Numbers. Tugende mu kitabo cyo kubara. Numbers chapter 10. Isura ya 10. Numbers simply means counting. Okubala ngabe chwa chisoma okuba kubala. There are two great countings in the book of Numbers. That's why it's called Numbers. At the beginning of the book, all the tribes are numbered. 20 years and up, those that can fight. Towards the end of the book, there's also another numbering of people to see where they are and how they are. You will never experience God until you stand up and be counted. If you remain a statistic, you will never, you will never have an impact to your generation. To some of us, we are simply a statistic. And when you die, this is how it's written on your tombstone. He was born in this year and he died in this year. May his soul rest in peace. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about that you live your life well because you stood up and identified yourself in your generation and you believed God to use you so that you stood and be counted so that you stood not only be counted but you stood and made a count so that you stood and made an account of God's work the writer of the book of Numbers is Moses but in Numbers and in Deuteronomy and and, 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 and in Leviticus is simply given an account of things how they happen. And when Moses died he didn't die like an ordinary man. No, the Bible says God but saluted him when he died. But also the people mourned for him for 30 days. Because he didn't die a statistic. He died when he was numbered among the greatest. And I prophesy and I declare to us that we will stand as a church and be counted. We will not be ignored in the name of Jesus. Our voice will not be ignored in the name of Jesus. I believe that with everything that I am. And with us understanding the supernatural, everything around us is going to change. Because the scripture teaches us that it's not by might, it's not by power, but by the spirit of the living God. So turn to your neighbor against the neighbor. Stand up and be counted. Amen. Amen. So in this great book of Numbers, we have a record of God's wonders and God's supernatural. In the book of Numbers chapter 10, one of the most powerful scriptures that I've ever read about God. And God's wonders. Let's begin from verses 28. And I want you to read, and I want you to read loud, please. What does the verse say? Thus were the journeyings of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. That is powerful. They journeyed as an army. Ready to fight. Ready to face the enemy. And before they set off, verses 29. 
Moses said unto Obib, the son of Regu, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are journeying unto a place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us. And we will do you good. For the Lord has spoken good concerning Israel. And he says unto them. I will not go. But I will depart to my own land. And to my kindred. And he said. This is Moses. Musa. Leave us. Not, I pray thee. For as much as you know where we are to camp in the wilderness, that thou must be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be if you go with us, it shall be that what goodness the Lord will do to us, the same will do unto you. Now, they are ready to go, but in their going, or where they are going, it is a vast waste land. Dungu. And they don't know the roots in the desert. But they are ready to go. It's an army ready, excited to go. Now Moses as a leader has some concerns. And he is thinking that here is a man who has grown up in this wilderness for many years. And if he go with us from what the Bible says he will be to us as eyes. He will be able to tell us where to stop. He will be able to tell us where the enemy is. He will be able to locate the water for us. Because it is that all you see is sand and rocks and scourging heat. So we don't know what to say. We don't know who to call. If anything happens in the wilderness, we don't know how we can escape because we do not know. And Moses is leading over three million people. So Moses in his wisdom for the very first time since he left Egypt is trying to rely on the arms of the flesh. And the man is trying to rely on now is his brother-in-law. The one that gave him the wife. I want you to think for, for the very first time Moses has lost sense of the supernatural for the very first time. All their journeys, it has been God. Since the day God chose him to go lead the children out of children of out of Egypt. And God showed him signs and wonders. And God told him what he'll do. And God did exactly what he said. And he did miracles and wonders in Egypt. And by the arm of the Lord, the Bible says, God brought them out. And every step of the way, it was God leading them. I want you to picture 
picture now they have come at the Red Sea. And at the Red Sea, they don't know how to cross the sea because they are no boats. And they can't go back because the Egyptians are pursuing. And all of a sudden, the entire camp begin to cry out. And they begin to say, Moses, we told you that we will die. Now look at what is happening to us. Now, Moses, Musa, and then Moses cried to the Lord. Musa na kabiya mukama. And then the Lord said, "Mukama na Moses, you don't have to cry. You have the answer in your hand." And then Moses, and then Moses turned to the children of Israel, and then he said, "Stand still, and you shall see the salvation of the Lord." And at that moment, by the direction of the Lord, the sea was divided, and they walk on the dry ground. What a miracle. When a man trusts in God. When a man depends on God. When a man depends on his grace. When a man depends on his ability. Because people come and people go. Nations rise and nations go. But the God of the supernatural will remain in every generation. So Moses trusted God. And God brought them through. And in the morning, the Bible says, when they look at the sea and it has closed, Pharaoh and his army were drowned. And before they drowned, God said to this Moses, The Egyptians you see today, you shall see no more. So the chapter of the Egyptian was closed by the supernatural. But that does not mean that the challenges are not coming at him. But what God knew that in every challenge he will be the strength, he will be the source, he will be the guardian, he will be the anointing, he will be the provision, he will be everything that they needed. So the journey begins. And they have no food. God provides. They have no water. God provides. They have no light. God becomes a light at night. They have no houses. God becomes a cloud. What else do you need? What else can you trust? But I want you to know it's possible that many times we lose that understanding that in our journeys of faith we will never lose that understanding that if God is the author let us allow God to be the finisher that if God is the one that lifts us up let us allow God to sustain us if it's God who has called us let us believe God to be our defender and protector if it's the blood that has saved us let us trust that the blood Lord will preserve us. If this is his church, let us believe that he will build his church. That even the gates of hell shall not prevail. That this is not man's work. But if he is God's work, that people will come and people will go. But if God stays, it will be well with our heart. It will be well with our spirit. It will be well with our souls. Let's does not forget that. Never forget that. Because your flesh sometimes will like to take an advantage to abstract your understanding and your view and your revelations. Because you live in this world and all you know is what you see and yet there is another world called the spirit world and that world overrides and over that world rules in the affairs of men in the church of Jesus Christ none of us has the final say God has the final 
say. Turn to someone next to you and tell them in a church like this one, God has the final say. You do not have the final say. I do not have the final say. None of us have the final say. God has the final say. One day, God had a problem with the children of Israel. And this is what he told Moses. I'm going to kill all of them. And I'm going to raise you. And I'm going to use you. So that out of you can come all the people that I need. And then you say you can stand before God and say I'm the greatest. There was a prophet that made that mistake. He stood before God and says, I'm the greatest. What did you just say? That you are Mr. Greatest? You just said you are Elijah the greatest? Elijah? What did you just say? You know, God used me, you used me to kill, you used me to so 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 Elijah. So Elijah. Kati wanko te sa abantu ne nzitaba nabi. So everybody knows you Elijah, yeah? But your mama nyinti oli wa ma. Oh you are the greatest. Go oh, I'm the only one that is left. I'm the only one who can do this. I'm the only one who can preach. Elijah, what did you just say? First and foremost, let me tell you something. I have reserved to me 7,000 men who have not bowed their knees. Now there is a greater revelation to every calling there are 7,000 calling behind so it stands before a great God a mighty God and then he says God I'm so mad you're mad? Have you ever read the story of Moses? How I refused him to go to the promised land. Because I'm the only one that has not bowed my knees. You? And then God says, Elijah, your work is done. You are fired now. So that you know, I am God and I'm God by myself. I am the one who determines who rises up. I am the only one who determines who gets down. Because promotion doesn't come from the east. And promotion doesn't come from the west. But I, Jehovah. I the king of kings. I the lord of lords. I the raisers of men. I the lifter of men. I am the judge. And because you didn't understand that. Your work has ended. And Elijah, Elijah thought God was joking. He says, this is the last prophetic word I'm giving you. When you leave my presence, there is a man who is working on his God. He's not a prophet. He's not even a preacher. He's not one of the sons of the prophets. No, he's not. He's simply an ordinary farmer. Deep down in the village. It's not among the elite. And by the way. It's not even among the 7,000 God was talking about. Because God said there are prophets. So Elisha was not a prophet. So said, God says let me just leave even the seven. The 7,000. The language he understand. 
is the anchorage of crops. What do you understand about crops? Seasons. Now, do you know that the prices of corn now are up a little bit? That's what he understands. He has never been to a king's palace. He has never served the man of God. He has never done anything for God. But there saw something about Elijah. No, Elisha, when Elijah met him, he found him tilling the ground. Great anointing falls upon those that God can locate tilling the ground. Now, that's not my message, but we'll get into that some other time. So he finds him plowing and digging. And then he, raise, he releases the mantle upon him. And then he left. He did not even say anything. <laughs> And the rest is history. That's the end of a great ministry. I don't know what else Elijah would have done. Maybe God had positioned him to be the next king. I don't know. But when he stood before a great God and began to tell the Lord, I am, I am, I am. With that attitude. I am the only one left. You are the only one. Can, can't you really, can't you really attribute your commitment to me? Can't you, can't you, in your words, can, can you say, Lord, you sustain me, you gave me the grace, you gave me the ravens, can't you say that? 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 The Bible says Bible. that no flesh should glory in his presence. It doesn't matter whether it's this flesh or that flesh or your flesh. All of us must bow at the feet of the cross. All of us must bow before the masses of God. All of us must bow before the presence of the living. Never come to a place of thinking you are the greatest. There's only one who is the greatest. And he's a champion of above champions. He's a king above all kings. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his name is Jesus. Many times we don't understand that concept. We don't have that understanding. We kind of lose it. So here is Moses. In the book that we have read of the numbers. You are asking a man. To be your eyes. What happened to God's eyes? Are you the one who told yourself to come to the wilderness? Oh, you know, what a foolish statement. Now, look, look, look at the way he's begging him. Moses, Moses, Musa. that thou may speak to us eyes. Moses, Musa, since the day God visited you in the book of Exodus chapter 3 he has taught you that God takes the despised and makes them the honorables he taught you that a dead stick has life as long as God is in it he taught you that a shepherd can bring a standstill to a great 
nation like Egypt. Moses, how could you lose such an understanding? And now you are pleading with a mere man, a mere man, a mere man. As if you got to that place because of that man. As if you made it because of him. As if it's the reason why God called you. Listen to me, beloved. When God calls you, when God calls me, when God saves you, He doesn't expect you to rely on anyone in this world, but rely upon His Spirit, to rely upon His grace. Yes, He gives you pastor to teach you that very principle and the scripture says as many are led by the spirit of God they are the children of God they ask to be a leading that comes from within that comes from the throne of grace thank God for me thank God for those but there come a time when we can't lead you like God wants to lead you because as much as I can lead you I don't understand tomorrow I don't know your destiny. I don't know what God has to do with you. I don't know why you were born. I don't know how you will end. It's only God who knows how you will finish, where you will start, the protection you need, the blessings you need, the people you need. Some people in your life today, they begin with you but they will not finish. It's only God who knows some people will come later those are the people that will finish so for me to trust you to the end of my journey the Bible says cast is every man that depends on the arm of flesh Moses you are about to fail Musa oh this one is my friend now he's the one telling me my spiritual direction. You, you are a fool if that's the direction you want. Take. Take. And you really analyze. He or she needs help and great help. You are leaving the Holy direction. Spirit behind you. So, oh, you know, this one, oh, they are saying, oh, he's saying. But what is God saying? Oh, this is exciting. Exciting, exciting about what? The only place that is exciting is the place of God is where. And listen what I'm going to say. And you standing in that place. Some of your friends. They are not like human people like you know. They are like the donkey of Balaam. As long as they have the word of the Lord. No, as long as they don't cast the word of the Lord. That's what you need because if you don't listen to that donkey, the angel has a sword to kill you. So I rather listen to a donkey than to listen to Barak who is trying to tell me that I'm going to reward you with such and such. Some of us, we don't be in the messes we are in. Some of us are about to make mistakes if we don't learn from those examples. Listen to what the scripture says. Thus saith the Lord. Cast is the man who trusts in man. And make flesh his strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. So in Numbers chapter 10, 
For the first time Moses missed God. But God is merciful. Everybody say God is he will give you as many chances if you are willing to work with him and walk with him. Therefore, if you blow up the last time, the best place to come is God. Are you hearing me? So, Moses now, in that midst of confusion, in the book of Numbers, you go to verse 32, and what does it say? <laughs> and it shall be, if thou you go with us, it shall be that the goodness that the Lord shall do unto us. Even the promise is given is not in God's will. Because the promise and the covenant belongs to the children of Israel. This one is a strange. Look at Moses now. Because he wants to entice him, please. He's forgetting the laws that God made him to receive. Verse 33. And they departed from the mountain of the road three days journey. And the man left and they don't know what to do. But something powerful happened. They left something powerful happened. Pick up that basket. And the other one. When they departed from the mountain, we have the ark of God is covenant left the holy of holies for the first time by itself. That ark was a contact that God had with the children of Israel. And that ark was covered and no man could look at it when they are journeyed. Because it was the presence of God. And every time they were moving from one place, the priest would come and they would cover the covenant box first. So that any man and any woman that will look at that covenant books without to that yet the holy of holies was always it was a box and in that box there were the ten commandments Once a year, Moses will take the blood and smear upon the covenant for the atonement of that sin. Once a year, nobody was allowed to go until Jesus will die. Then the curtain in the Holy of Holies will come down. So that people would now access the Holy of Holies. But God decided to tell Moses that the days will come when I will open up the grace era. So that everybody can see the covenant box. That's number one. But this time around, he decided himself to come. And carry the covenant box 
And all of them saw the covenant box. And Moses said, everybody follow the covenant box. And the Bible says, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them for three days journey. No, 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 you didn't get that. You didn't get that. <laughs> so this box now, which was not supposed to to be seen for two reasons because of Adam's fall number two because God's judgment had not come upon Jesus yet but God decided to help them to let them know that when I open up the era of grace when that time comes people will experience the supernatural because it will not be them working. It will be me carrying my presence, not after them. But I will be carrying my presence. And my presence will guide them. And my presence will lead them. And my presence will go before them. Because when the presence go, no weapon formed against them shall stand. You will not need man to lead you. You will not need man to help you. You will be living in the realm of the supernatural. Because now it is God before you. And if it is God before you, then goodness and mercy will fall after you, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When God goes before you, goodness and mercy falls after you. So when Satan tries to come at the front, he meets God. When he comes behind you, he meets goodness and mercy. And at the end of the day, you can say, I'm dead with Christ and my life is hid with Christ in God. It's no longer I who lives now. Oh, and when Christ who is my life shall appear, then I shall appear with him in glory. I hear what I'm saying and that is the hero we are in now. In Moses' day, it was for three days. But to us, as long as we are children of God, we shall be led by the covenant box. We shall be led by the Spirit of God. We shall be led by the presence of God. If we make a decision, so the covenant box came out of the Holy of Holies by itself. And the scripture teaches that then it went so that it can find a resting place for them. Look at the next verse. What does it say? And the cloud of the Lord was above the nature. When they went out of the camp. Before the, the covenant box. Above them. The cloud. God is leading them. And God is leading them. They cannot be beaten by the scorching sun. And God is leading them for one reason and one reason alone. To find for them a resting place. Look at the next verse. So it was. Whenever the ark set out, Moses prayed this prayer. 
Lord. Rise up, O Lord. <laughs> and let your enemies be scattered. And let those that hate you free before you. Yeah. Whenever the axe set out to go, Moses lifted up his eyes and, and says, Rise up, O Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. And let those that hate you flee before you. The next verse. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, to the many thousands of Israel. If you're going to experience the supernatural of God in your life, you have to allow God to judge sin at the mercy seat so that mercy can begin to flow. But also, you've got to depend upon God all the way. Because there comes a time when you don't see a way out. When all the people you knew are no more. No earthly contact. And life now leaves you at the crossroads. But in that moment, look up to God. And the supernatural will flow. And the grace of God will flow. And the healing touch of God will flow.